Hello friends, this is Haseeba. Welcome to today's session on the next lab program, which is to draw a simple shaded scene consisting of a teapot on a table. Right? So we are basically drawing a scene which has a teapot on a table and define suitably the position and properties of the light source along with the properties of the surfaces of the solid object which is used in the scene. Right? So in this lab program, we have to define the position and the properties of the light source as we know we as we have studied in our open gl illumination models we can use a different types of light sources like ambient source like diffuse light source and also specular reflection light source so we can make use of any one of these light source and we can define the position and the properties of the light source and we should also define the properties of the solid object there are basically three types of light source as we know Right. So the first one is ambient lightning. Ambient, as the meaning says, it is it refers to uniform lightning. Right. So a simple example is a tube light. And when you switch on the tube light, uniform light will be displayed in the complete area. That is, it can be a room or a hall. Right. So in many situations, the lights have been designed and positioned in order to provide the uniform illumination throughout a room. Right? So such illumination is basically achieved by making use of large sources that have diffusers whose basic purpose is to scatter the light in all the directions. Whenever we want to scatter the light in different directions, right? so at that time we can make use of this ambient light source right? So and this will give us uniform lighting in the entire area or space. The second type of lightning source is diffuse surfaces. So these are basically characterized by reflected light which is being scattered in all the directions, right? So the walls which are painted with matte or flat paint are diffuse reflectors and as are many natural materials such as terrain which is viewed from an airplane or a satellite, right? So this diffuse surface is whenever a light falls on a particular surface, right? So the light gets reflected in all the directions. So perfectly these diffuse surfaces, they scatter light equally in all directions and this they appear the same to all the viewers, right? So for example, whenever a sunlight falls on an object, right? So light is reflected in all directions in equally, right? So equally the light is reflected in all the directions so that it appears the same to all the viewers. The third type of the light source is specular reflection. So this specular reflection is basically happens or it occurs whenever the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection, right? So most of the surfaces they appear shiny because most of the light that is reflected is scattered in a narrow range of angle which is close to the angle of reflection right so angle of incidence is close to the angle of reflection that is why most of the surfaces they appear shiny so for example mirrors mirrors are the best example for specular reflection the light which is coming from an incoming light ray it may be partially absorbed right but all the reflected light it emerges at a single angle obeying the rule that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection right so this is the third type of light source which is specular reflection so in our lab program we are basically making use of the ambient light source where we are distributing the uniform light in the entire scene right so if you want to make use of the other two types of the light source you can do so so let us start our program explanation so this is your required output how it should come so here we are having a simple shaded scene right so where we have three walls right so this is one wall and this is wall right and we have the floor and then we have the table so the table has the table top and it has a table legs so on the top of the table we are actually displaying a teapot right so we are placing a teapot so this is the sixth lab program output so coming to the lab program explanation so first we have to include the header file which is glut.h right so we have our main function so in the main function i'm making basically making use of an array the name of the array is ambient right so this ambient array takes four parameters the first three are basically for rgb values and the next one is alpha so next we have one more array which is called as light po uh, light, light underscore pause right so this is basically used to set the position of the light right so here we are make, uh, making use of one function which is called as gl light fv right so to that particular function we have to pass this array array values right so we are passing some values here right so 27 80 2 comma 3 right so this is basically defines the position of the light 
next we have the glut in it window size right so it is basically used to set the size of the window then we have the create window so i am creating a window the name of the window is a scene then i have glut display function it is a callback function so i am calling a function by name display right so then uh, if i have to make use of any the lightning functions right so first i have to enable those lightning functions so i'll be doing it by making use of the function gl enable so gl enable gl underscore lightning then whenever i go for lightning i have eight different types of lights right so they are categorized as from light zero to light seven so here in our lab program we are making use of light zero so if you want to change and see the output right so you can just change this gl underscore light zero to light one light two like that up to seven next we are making use of one function which is called as gl material fp so this is basically used because we want a shaded scene here right so in order to have a shaded scene we have to set the material function right so this material function takes three arguments right so the first argument talks about the place where you want to where you want the scene to be shaded right so here it is front so gl underscore front or we can have gl underscore back right so you have to specify the place where you want to have the have a shaded part right so we have gl underscore front then we will be specifying the type of the light source we are using in our lab program here i am using gl underscore ambient light source so i have taken the constant as gl underscore ambient and this is the array ambient array whichever we have used in our main program then i'm i'll be using one more function which is gl light fv so this gl light fv also takes the three arguments gl underscore light zero so gl underscore light zero it is basically used to select the type of the light as i have told there are eight different types of lights so you can make use of any one of the lights then i have gl underscore position which is basically used to specify the position of the light right so that position values we are passing through the light underscore pause array which we have already defined in our main program right so then i have gl enable gl underscore depth underscore test right so because here i am using my z axis also because the output whatever i am getting it is a three dimensional view right so that is why i have to enable my depth buffer so i am enabling gl enable gl underscore depth underscore test right so then uh, we have our function blood main loop so coming to our callback function display right so first in the display function i have my viewport right so which takes the values as x min y min x max y max so i'll basically pass it as 0 0 700 700 then i have gl clear so gl clear where i'm clearing the color buffer and also i'm clearing my depth buffer here right so gl underscore color underscore buffer underscore bit and gl underscore depth underscore buffer underscore bit right so color the buffer and also the depth buffer then we have in my display scene as you can see here i have three walls right so one is the left wall this is the right wall and here i have the bottom that is the floor also right so in order to set the in order to form the walls i'm making use of one function which is called as the object function right so this object function is basically used to draw this scene right so in this object function when i come to this object function the object function takes six parameters right so three translation parameters and three scaling parameters because i have to translate and then i have to scale the object right so translate so that the object or the unit cube is what i'm using here so this unit cube is translated into the different walls right so that is why so as you can see here we are making use of the glut solid cube right so of unit distance so i'm basically drawing a solid cube this solid cube is actually converted into this three walls right so the solid cube the cube as you can see here you can see the shape of the cube here the walls are in the shape of the cube right so this solid cube is rotated and it is translated into different positions so that i will get this scene right so that is why i am using the translation and scaling parameters here so double tx double ty double tz and sx sy sz right so here i'm making use of rotated so these are the three rotation functions right so gl rotated 50 50 is the angle right so the rotation function takes four parameters the first value is the angle of rotation next we have x value y value and z value right so here i'm performing uh, 
y axis rotation right so next i am performing negative x axis rotation negative z axis rotation right so like this these are the angles whichever values you want you can give right so based on the angle you will get your scene right so next i have gl translate function which is basically used to translate it translate the unit cube right so so that i will get the walls in the correct place then i have the scale in order to increase the size of the walls right so basically we are using here solid cube of unit distance and which will be translated into our output right so you are calling the object function so now in our display function we called the object function here right so i as i told it has six parameters right a double tx ty tz these are the translation parameter and then i had the scaling parameters sx sy sz tx ty tz and sx sy sz right so like this you have to pass some values right so randomly you can pass any values here we are translating by 0 0 0 0.5 right and i am scaling by 1 1 0 0.04 right so that i will get this a scene right so like this you can pass the values so since i have to draw three walls right so i am passing i am calling this object a function three times right so one is a translation with respect to z right so one is with respect to minus uh, minus 0 0.5 that is negative y value and minus 0 0.5 that is negative x axis translation i'm doing right so then in the scene i as you can see we have four legs of the table right so we have to draw the four legs now so again in order to draw the four table legs again i'm calling my object function four times right so one one function where one call for the function will draw my uh, table the leg right so four legs of the table i'll be drawing by calling the object function four times right so then as you can see here after the three walls and four legs i have the table top right so in order to construct the top of the table i'll be calling my object function once again by giving different translation parameters and scaling parameters right so once again i have in order to place the teapot in the center right so i'll once again go for a rotation three times rotation right again translation then i'll be drawing my teapot blood solid teapot 0 0.09 is nothing but the size of the of figure what you are specifying here the diameter size right so if you give 0 0.09 right so then you will get the small size of the teapot if you give more so size here right so the teapot will be bigger so instead of solid teapot you can also draw a wired teapot by using the built-in function glut wired teapot right so like this if you want to go for a solid cone sometimes in exam they will ask you that instead of teapot i want to draw a cone right so at that time you can go for a glut solid cone if you want to draw a wired cone you can go for wired cone and you can place it on the table right so next as we know gl flush it is basically used to force the activation of all the open gl functions right so like this so this is your object function which is basically used to rotate and translate the unit cube so that it is positioned properly in the scene and finally you will get your output so this is the output of your sixth lab program that is to draw a simple shaded scene right so with a teapot on the table thank you